you will love the Dutch city of Delft. It's one of the most famous, historical, and beautiful towns in the Netherlands. Preserved in picture book perfection, it's also a modern city that functions very well for its 100,000 residents. As you're going to see in this comprehensive video guide, it's a town of bicycles, canals, cheese, and beer, typical of the Netherlands, with friendly, well-educated people, excellent preservation of its historic buildings, many of them 400, 500 years old, clustered in the historic center of the old town in a compact size about one half square kilometer. Very easy to cover walking around on foot. It would be quite okay if your main activity in the visit is just sitting at a terrace restaurant having a beer, soaking up the historic atmosphere. You'll find many outdoor restaurants all around the big market square. We'll take you there, show you a calm day, and we'll show you a busy market day right in the center of town. With over 500 stores and several street markets, shoppers will find much to love. And we'll take you to the ultimate shop where they manufacture and sell Royal Delftware, the classic product this town is most famous for. Perhaps your main activity here is simply walking around, enjoying the extensive pedestrian zone. No cars, quiet lanes, little canals. Even in the evening, it's a charming spot to be out walking or you could rent a bicycle. It's so easy to reach Delft by train using the excellent Dutch rail system where you will arrive in a new station. It is a spectacular contrast to the old buildings of the historic center. A bridge leads from the station across a canal right into town where you'll cross the tram tracks and plunge right into the historic center. Perhaps you've arrived in the evening. It's an especially magical time. We'll show you a lot more evening shots later in the program. Have a beer outside at twilight, then find a cozy restaurant for a lovely meal. You'll find the Netherlands is a relatively small country, easy to get around. From Delft to Amsterdam is only one hour by train. And the other main cities around Delft that we'll be showing you later in our series are half an hour to 10 minutes away. An overview from Google Earth illustrates the route that you'll take walking out of the train station into the old town. It's only a few blocks and you're in the middle of things. Head north a few more blocks to walk to the direction of the Central Market Square. You won't need a taxi to get to your hotel, just walk. And notice the beauty of these buildings. Simply called the Market or Demarked. This will be the center and focus of your activities in Delft. With the new church at one end sporting the second highest bell tower in the country and the city hall at the other. And of course with shops and restaurants all around it. We'll also take you walking on those nearby streets along the beautiful canals and see more shops all around the center. It's a small area, just about one half square kilometer. And while you could get a feeling for the place with a one-day visit, walking around in the market square and checking out some of the nearby blocks, however, you'll see it's much more worthwhile to spend a couple of nights so that you can really relax and enjoy the special charms of this place. Perhaps best in the shoulder season, like September seen here, when it's nice and quiet and peaceful. They get a million annual visitors, mostly in the summertime, but that's nothing compared to the crowds that you're gonna run into in Amsterdam, which unfortunately is the only place that many visitors to the Netherlands ever see. And while Amsterdam is a wonderful destination that you must visit, it would be a shame to stop there and miss out on all these other places in the country that we'll be showing you in our series. We had a nice talk with the owner of one of the cafes on the market square here who filled us in on his feelings about Delft. You're here in Delft and uh, you want to know uh, why people should come to Delft. Yeah. Uh, yeah we have a lot of town. old buildings of course in Delft, what's very nice. Everything you can do in this city is you can do it by feet. So you don't have to use 
uh, a bus or a tram or a train. You could just walk here, mm -hmm. and it's like a it's like a fairy tale actually. Okay. That's what I think about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then there's the little canals. Yeah, there are nice canals. You can make a round trip by boat, uh, a market, a uh, flea market. So you can buy uh, small things. We have a flower market. There's a, a grocery market every Thursday. So there's a lot to see in the city what you really like, what people normally really like. There are a lot of uh, ter terraces and restaurants. Uh, you can eat on a boat or, or you can eat uh, uh, on the square. And you really feel uh, in the 1600s when you sit here. Very well preserved. Uh, historic yeah, history. because people like to to, uh, to keep their things very nice and very uh, in good shape. Uh huh. So and then of course Vermeer is uh, your famous. And we of course have a lot of painters. We have a nice museum, the Vermeer Museum. We'll take you inside the Vermeer Center later in the program. Nice painting of Vermeer. The the street of Vermeer, his house where he has been born, is in this town as well. You can visit that as well. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just. When you're here, it's nice to be here for a couple of days. And mm -hmm. then you can see all the town if you like. And very relaxing? Very relaxing because it's a student city as well. Um, there are about 15,000 students, so that gives a very good energy to the city. People live here. They, they, yeah, they live above uh, the businesses you, you see here. Uh, yeah, people bought it uh, a long time ago and it keeps it in the families. And not many cars? No, it's uh, completely car free. You can park your car uh, on the on the edge of the center, oh. and you just walk into the center. And nice. you only have to watch out for bikes. That's the only bikes, thing. Bikes, yeah, that's. <laughs> and what's the building behind you? That's the city hall. It was the Palace of Justice before that. And they still have some offices. In yeah, there. some offices, but not 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 much. Not very much now. Uh -huh. And uh, now it's. Uh, just for people who like to marry. With a bit of humility and sense of humor, this couple is having fun getting into an old Volkswagen bus. Beautifully restored, looks like excellent condition, rather than getting into a limousine. Uh, one of the most uh, important things, I think, why people come to Delft is because our royal family is buried here in the church. Inside the church, you'll see the monument and mausoleum of William of Orange. More about that later. My name is George, George Stromberg, and I'm the owner of From 9 to 7. It looks like George's restaurant is a fun place to work. Thanks Thank you very much. And it's a nice place to eat. I had a lovely brunch there. You'll easily find it right on the main market square. They also serve lunch and salads, soups. You can get an early dinner. And of course, they serve beer and wine. The tower that rises above City Hall is considered the city's oldest surviving building, dating back to 1300. It's the remains of the Fort of the Dukes, but lightning struck in 1618, burning down the rest of the building. They were able to save the tower, and then they designed a new U-shaped building to wrap around the tower, constructed later in the 17th century in a Renaissance style. Behind it is the House for Butter, a very important product back in those days. Now it's a restaurant like many of the other buildings around the square. You'll find a nice variety of visitor-oriented shops like cheese and souvenirs, the clothing stores, the famous pottery. And surprisingly, it's not a touristic rip-off kind of place because it's also a shopping area for some locals as well. It's a place where they go through many barrels of beer. Hugo Grotius was a Delft native whose writings in the early 17th century laid the foundation for international law. He was the first to describe the world as a society of states held together by mutual agreements rather than force. You can get around in that mini shuttle if you're tired of walking. The market gets very busy every Thursday. It's market day. People flock here and you'll notice that most of the shoppers are locals. We're here in the month of September when there are not that many visitors walking around and they're here to buy their produce, get fresh vegetables, pick up lunch and candies, get some cheese, chat with their neighbors and generally enjoy this atmosphere which has been going on, they say, for over 500 years with the same market right here. The Dutch have a long history of trading and commerce with the establishment of the incredible Dutch East India Company back in the beginning of the 1600s. While looking at today's market, it's a good time to recap some of that amazing history of the Dutch West India Company. 
which during the 17th century became the world's first global corporation, establishing many trade routes that reached from Africa through India and into the Far East. Their early focus was on the spice trade, trading in nutmeg, cloves, and black pepper, where they actually gained a monopoly of trade to Europe and could charge 20 times more than what they paid for these goods, quickly making them very wealthy with soaring profits. Over time, they diversified, trading silver and copper from Japan to trade with India and China for silk, cotton, porcelain, and textiles, also gaining a monopoly over cinnamon becoming the world's richest company with over 150 merchant ships and 40 warships, 50,000 employees, and a private army of 10,000 soldiers. Throughout that golden age of the 17th century, Delft played a major role with its own harbor, along with the larger cities of Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and several other ports. At the same time, Delft had its own strong economy with production of textiles, butter, cheese, and 200 breweries using slightly polluted canal water that was then made drinkable by using it to make beer. This highly developed economy produced enormous wealth that enabled construction of the beautiful city that we see today, which fortunately was preserved because later in history, the economy of Delft went into a decline and not a lot happened here in the 19th century in terms of redevelopment, thus preserving the beautiful historic structures. At the same time, in the 17th century, Delft was enjoying an artistic renaissance and scientific breakthroughs with the career, most famously, of Vermeer and also the scientist Anthony von Leeuwenhoek, who invented the microscope and created the science of microbiology when he discovered bacteria. Is that why Dutch cheese is so good? I mean, the combination of science and arts and agriculture and trade somehow has given us this wonderful food and quite affordable. Here you get a kilogram for 10 euro. Well, now I shifted this over to the other market that happens in Delft at the Turf Mark. It's smaller than that Thursday main market, but still really charming. Primarily a food market, it gets started before nine o'clock in the morning. Nearly all of the shoppers are local. Easy to find, it's located just one block south of the main market square. It's always nice to have a look at the local markets when you travel and each city takes its turns. There's usually two, sometimes three markets per week in each place. We're here in Delft on a Saturday morning and it's a local affair. It's a relatively small market for produce, vegetables, fruits, fresh breads, and just a place to have a look and poke around. Of course, they do have supermarkets here in Delft, but it seems that the locals prefer coming out and buying their foods fresh and certainly when the market appears on a Saturday morning. You can tell that the shoppers here with their bicycles are regular customers. With a food basket on the front and a children's seat in the back, this bicycle is your basic family vehicle, a Dutch version of our SUV maybe. This country has 17 million people and 23 million bicycles. On Saturdays, this is a general market with some flowers sold, but on Thursdays, the same place has a bigger flower market. Along with the famous tulips, the Dutch grow a wide variety of blossoms. It's a big part of their economy. There are some ready to eat foods, so you will not go hungry here. Maybe pick up some bread to go with your cheese and fruits and you've got yourself makings of a nice picnic. Love that dark bread. It's called turf mark because it used to be a canal where they brought in turf or peat, that decayed soil that was used as a fuel for the breweries, which were major Delft industries back in the Middle Ages. And the canal was filled in in the 19th century and became this very useful tree-lined plaza. It's one of the main open-air spaces of Delft, which of course has a number of outdoor restaurants that are open every day in the fair weather. On a map, we can see the three main squares in the center of town, the Turf Mark, where we've just been, the main market square, and the Basin Mark, 
just two blocks over, but slightly out of the way, so it's more of a gathering place for locals rather than the tourists. It's an ideal tree-shaded plaza surrounded by restaurants and bars with indoor seating as well as outdoors on the terrace. A great place to hang out and relax. It's a lot more peaceful now than in its early days when it was the Animal Market Square, the Beeston Mark, where they sold the cattle. And prior to that, back in the 16th century, it was a monastery. Later in the 20th century, it became a parking lot. And it wasn't until the late 90s that the parking spaces disappeared and this lovely entertainment center was created, surrounded by 11 restaurants. Spice House Didi is one of the best in town. According to TripAdvisor, it ranks number three out of 200 restaurants in Delft. With that cozy interior and a friendly, helpful staff, so I had an excellent meal in here. It's a big menu with 15 different meat and fish entrees and four different vegetarian choices. Washed down with a lot of good Dutch beer. Typical price for an entree is in the mid 20 euros, or you could just have an appetizer and a drink. But make a reservation if you're going for dinner. Just around the corner from the Beeston Mark, along a lovely canal, is the location of the hotel that I stayed at for my three nights in Delft and had a chat with the owner who described it and the surroundings. Welcome at Hotel Johannes Vermeer. Hotel Johannes Vermeer is located in the city center of Delft. And we're here at the Molslaan. Molslaan is one of the nice little streets of Delft with a lot of convenience stores. We have a nice shoe store and a flower market every week. Uh, so it's really nice to walk around here. On walking distance of all the nice points of interest of Delft, the big market square with its city hall and church. The, even the station is on walking distance. Within 10 minutes you're uh, at the train station. Delft is a small city. We call it Little Amsterdam. So it has a lot of canals, um, but also a lot of nice little picturesque streets where you can walk around. Also very good uh, to do it on boat or by bike. Uh, but it's really nice to just walk around and see all the nice old buildings and all the people who live here as well. So in little nice houses and a lot of students are living here. So this hotel has 30 rooms, 25 standard rooms and five uh, suites. Uh, we also have a nice patio and a roof terrace. So I think you will really enjoy here at the Hotel Johannes Vermeer. And we also serve breakfast and lunch here in our brasserie. That's a little restaurant where we uh, have nice coffees, cakes and sandwiches and salads. And we are famous for our wall painting from the girl with the pearl earring. All known as a famous picture of Vermeer. Delft is famous, of course, for Johannes Vermeer, one of the famous painters from Holland, uh, but also famous for its Delft Blue. We have several uh, Delft Blue factories where they still paint the uh, ceramics. And uh, right on the canal. And right on the canal with its swans and ducks. There's a historic building nearby that dates back to 1563 when it was an orphanage and then became headquarters of the city construction engineer and now it's a restaurant. Walking a few blocks back over towards the city center, we pass another restaurant, De Kirk, which bills itself as a gastro pub. Lots of different beers on tap and gourmet pub grub with a traditional if simple wood paneled interior. You can see that Cornmark is a busy street. It's really a lot of fun to walk along here. Just watch out for the bicycles. Many shops and a canal running along it with little bridges across the canal. We're right in the center, just near the marketplace, heading for the Vermeer Center, a nice museum about the life of Vermeer. As usual in this small city, it's only about a five or a 10 minute walk to get there. And these really are some of the nicest blocks in town. This is as good as it gets, complete with several antique shops spilling out onto the sidewalk. The Vermeer Center Delft is housed in a historic building that used to be a guild for creative people, a gathering place like a union hall for bookmakers, booksellers, potters, and painters. They came here to socialize and discuss the arts and promote their businesses. 
Vermeer used to attend this guild very often, including some periods when he was the chairman. In the lower level, they have an exhibit of his entire collection with copies of all 37 known pictures in the original size, high quality digital reproductions. And they've reconstructed what his studio might have looked like with some copies of uh, implements and paintbrushes. He lived in Delft his whole life and by the age of eight, he lived across the street at an inn owned by his father. And later he went to live with his mother-in-law on the other side of the market square. So he always used to be around this area. The museum also features some innovative multimedia displays and movies, and you'll have an audio headphone set to guide you through. The museum is open every day from 10 to 5. When you come out of the museum, keep on walking along the Voldersgracht, this lovely canal with shops along one side of it, and that's going to lead you down to an intersection of several bridges which are among the most picturesque in town including this bridge that was featured in that movie, The Girl with the Pearl Earring, with Scarlett Johansson walking across it. We are in a quaint neighborhood that's just behind the new church, that big structure that's on the main market square. We'll be taking you in there shortly, but now we're going to have a walk around and look at some of the bridges and the side lanes here. The Eat Cafe invites you to sit on their open terrace or on their dining boat that will surround you with peace but also give you an awesome view at the busy and picturesque streets of Delft. We're going to take you on a little wander around here for the next couple of minutes and show you from an aerial perspective of Google Earth the neighborhood that we're looking at is just behind the new church quite near the marketplace in a pedestrian zone of canals and wide sidewalks with many shops and restaurants. This bridge right next to Eat Cafe is one of the most famous and picturesque in town. Each bridge is a little hill for the bicycles to go over and if you're not going fast enough like this guy, you need to use your foot to push you along. That's why most bicycles pedal along pretty quickly with all these ups and downs they've got to navigate. This is the famous little street. After much research, it was recently discovered that this is the location for one of Vermeer's most famous paintings, as seen then and now. That painting is just one of only two of his surviving works that picture actual scenes in Delft. The remainder of his paintings are mostly portraits that were done inside his house, which was located a few blocks away over by the market square. Nearly 700 buildings in Delft are listed as national monuments because of their beauty and their cultural historical value. And this means that the owners would need a permit before they're going to make any kinds of modifications to it. That's one of the main reasons that Delft is looking so historic and is so well preserved. There is a lot of government control that makes it happen. These buildings are protected inside and out, where you even need permission to clean the facade or change the color. After going up and down a few of these canals, we've circled back towards the new church and heading through the market square to have a look at the street that Vermeer lived on for most of his life. His house was on this road, and yet very little is actually known about Vermeer. It's quite a mystery. His actual house is gone, but they say the location of it was probably right about where this tattoo parlor is located, next to a church, which has a sign on it commemorating this historic location. And that brings us back to the Market Square, where it is time for us to go to church. It's called the New Church, even though it dates from the early 14th century about 750 years old, so the name is something of a paradox, but at least it's newer than the old church, so it's all relative. We'll also show you the old church in a couple of minutes. It's most famous as the burial place of the Dutch royal family, the House of Orange, featuring a remarkable funeral monument to William of Orange, also called William the Silent. He is considered the father of the country because in 1572, he came here to live and work to lead the revolt against the occupying Spanish army. And he succeeded and defeated the Spaniards, 
becoming the founder of the Netherlands. The church is still used for burials of some members of the Dutch royal family, most recently in 2002 and 2004. The Tourist Information Office is located on the market next to the new church. They are known as VVV and can be very useful in your visit. So you should stop in and get some free maps and information, tips on dining, walking tours, activities, and hotels. We had a chance to talk with one of their representatives about what to see and do in Delft. Delft is a beautiful city, a historic, beautiful small town. It's a historical inner city, a cozy inner city with a lot of shops, cozy restaurants, squares. It's the perfect postcard town. And easy to uh, see the whole place on foot. The longer you stay, how more details you will see uh, within buildings, within museums, within the historical inner city. Uh, we got Johannes Vermeer, world famous painter. He was born and, uh, uh, and raised here in Delft. And we've got Delft Blue, which is world famous as well. Delft is a perfect home base. It's centrally located within Rotterdam and The Hague. It's only 10 minutes away by train, Gouda as well. Uh, also Leiden and uh, Utrecht are nearby, uh, approximately 30 to 40 minutes. So it's the perfect base to cover all the metropolitan area of the Netherlands. Delft is a very convenient place to live. It's a, like a small town where everything is within hand reach. Delft is one of the biggest student cities. Uh, we've got a university, a well-known and w quite famous and high-ranked university, a technical university. Mm -hmm. So we don't, uh, not only got like the historical, but we also got the new city of innovation and technique. You can buy a ticket for all day or a single ride on that little van. Another major pedestrian shopping street just a few blocks north of the market square. And then we came across yet another street market, number three if you're keeping track. This one's a lot of fun. It's kind of an antique general market. You can pick up some royal Delft porcelain at a bargain price, get some clothing, knickknacks, some antiques maybe. You might call it a flea market, but it's a little bit more upscale, very nice stuff. It happens on Thursdays, but it's even bigger on Saturday. You'll notice they're not selling food here, they're not selling clothing. Oh, there's some fabrics, but all kinds of vintage items. It's the kind of place where you can strike up a conversation with some locals. It extends right up to the old church where we're going next. Notice this unusual bridge that has a small terrace down at the water level. There's a stone staircase called the Musel Trap that leads down to the water because mussels, the shellfish, were brought here by ship until the 19th century. That leads us next door to the old church which dates from 1246 and that makes it the oldest church in Delft, built in the Gothic style. Both the new church and old church have international allure because of all the famous people from Dutch history who have been interred within their walls. Here we have burials of Johannes Vermeer, the scientist Anthony van Leeuwenhoek, and also an admiral, Martin Trump, who helped defeat the Spanish back in the 16th century, fighting against the mighty military of King Philip II of Spain. It's quite remarkable to see the amount of stained glass windows in this very early Gothic church. The light comes flooding in. Some of the windows are colored and others are plain glass to give that effect of brightness and heaven inside the church. Of course, there were many renovations and expansions and reconstructions of the church during its centuries of existence. The organs here and also back in the new church are both often played as part of concert performances open to the public. Just behind the church is a very important historic site called Prinzenhof. It was the court of the prince back in the Middle Ages. Originally it was a monastery and later served as the residence for William of Orange, the founder of the country who was murdered here in 1584. The museum today is open to the public. They have changing exhibits as well as their permanent collection. Just around the corner along the old Delft Canal, you'll find a nice hotel, Delft Museum Hotel. And beyond here towards the north, it's mostly a residential district. So unless you've got lots of time, you really don't need to venture further north. You definitely want to explore Delft at twilight and into the evening. 
Come on out, have a drink, and have some dinner. Stroll through these beautifully lit streets, especially in the neighborhood around the marketplace. Not only is it the historic center, but it's considered downtown Delft by the local residents. This is where they come to party and walk and see their friends. There are a couple of really excellent restaurants just behind the city hall. And throughout the market square in front of that tall church tower, you'll find many more restaurants. The Grand Café, which is open from 9.30 in the morning until 1 a.m., you could sit indoors, but it's so much nicer outside in the evening. And the Vogue, as you see, both very popular, with a local clientele so much that their websites don't even have an English language version. However, of course, Dutch speak English. We are so fortunate as English-speaking tourists, there is never a problem in communicating. So menus nearly always have English translations for you. It's quite safe to be out walking at night. Don't worry about any danger because the crime rate in the Netherlands is much lower than America, for example, because the Dutch have created a society that takes care of everybody. We have two more activities to show you tomorrow morning. We're going to take a boat ride in the canals and we're gonna go visit the Royal Delft factory and show you how they make the Delftware. The map shows a quick recap of our walking route through the center, easily managed in a couple of days. Beyond that historic center are the residential neighborhoods that you might not have time to see. Then we'll show you some of our canal boat ride and take you off the map to the right down to Royal Delft Factory. Next morning, we took the canal boat tour with the company called Ronvart Delft. They've been doing this for 50 years, so they really have experienced captains and guides, and they take you on a nice short route. I'm just going to abbreviate the tour for our video. It's already a pretty long movie, and we want to get down to Royal Delft Factory. So some quick scenes of the buildings, historic buildings gliding by, going under the bridges, their brochure claims the guides are all passionate and knowledgeable about the rich history, so we wanted to talk to one of the guides and get his story. I'm a full-time student here, studying mechanical engineering, or I just finished my bachelor and I'm now going to do my master here in Delft. So in two years I will be graduated. <laughs> did you do your undergraduate in Delft also? Yes, I did it as well. Oh, it so was, you like Delft? I like Delft. And it's a good university here, it's only technical, so I like that. And this is a good job. You're outside all day long, just entertaining some people, so that's fine. So this is a part-time job? This is part-time. I do this about, there only work students, or most of them are students. And I work about 40, 40 students, I think, and you work four to five times a month. But you make kind of good money. Yeah. If the people tip good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ab, for a nice ride. And we're continuing walking south now towards the Royal Delft factory and showroom, slightly beyond the historic center that we've been spending time at, but still a lovely neighborhood with a mix of new and old. Passing Breestraat, which is a direct route over to the train station, just a block away from here. And you'll see many people are hauling their bags through town to the train station. Here's the same angle as Vermeer's famous view of Delft. We're looking at one of the old warehouses. At this point, the river is called Xi and gets quite wide with direct shipping connections to Leiden and Rotterdam. And from there, out to the North Sea or down the Rhine River. It's a growing part of town with some modern apartments enjoying a lovely waterfront view. Which brings us right to the entrance of Royal Delft Showroom and Factory, where we are going to enjoy a tour of the facilities. These tours are open to the general public for a slight admission fee, or you're welcome to come into the showroom, the sales room, without any entrance charge at all. So, welcome to Royal Delft. Um, we're going to take you on a little uh, walk through our factory, discovering our long history. We're going to show you during our tour, our museum. You're going to watch the painter at work and admire the beautiful collection in our showroom. And you can have a grand tour when you come inside, including a reproduction 
of the most famous painting in the Netherlands, The Night Watch. You'll discover the magic of how clay is transformed into a variety of wonderful porcelain ceramic vessels. You'll get to see how many of the pieces are hand painted. The decorating process starts with the creation of the outline of the traditional decoration, after which the painters carefully fill in the details by hand using special paintbrushes made of marten and squirrel hair. The Delft Blue scenery is painted with a color mixture made to a centuries-old recipe consisting mostly of cobalt oxide. After the piece has been hand-painted, it's sprayed with a glaze. Now the glaze covers the decoration with an opaque white layer, and then during the firing process, the glaze melts at a temperature of 1200 degrees centigrade into a transparent layer of glass. And with the chemical reaction during the firing process, the design painted in black, hidden below, comes out a rich Delft blue with a strong and shiny glazed surface. Most of the pieces are made here in mold. We pour the liquid clay into the plaster mold. It coats the clay to the walls of the mold, forming a cast inside that dries and can then be removed. Then each article has to be finished by hand using the sponge and a knife. When it's perfect, it's ready for the first firing process. That happens in one hour, five kilns. The firing process takes 24 hours. That's including cooling down and the temperature is about 1,100 degrees. Not all of the pieces are hand painted because that's more expensive. So there's another technique that utilizes a transfer like a decal. They put the decal in hot water, place it on the handmade plate collection, and then during a final firing process, the decoration fuses into the glaze. The decals are custom designed by the painters of the workshop. This is the handmade collection, but yeah, not hand painted. It's decorated with a transfer technique. You'll also visit their museum collection, which includes a room in tribute to Vermeer, who worked in Delft at the same time this company was founded. Well, this is our royal collection. Um, our name, of course, is Royal Delft. We do have a very special relationship with the members of the Dutch royal family. So we have the honor to realize right, our beautiful commemorative plates, special occasions, but also the portraits. So you can admire our modern collection. Royal Delft like to maintain the tradition, but we also like the challenge to work with modern designers. Well, this is our Christmas plate collection. Each year, one of our best master painters realized a new design with a, a Christmas theme. The history of this company is really amazing. Dutch interest in porcelain dates back to 1600 when the Dutch East India Company brought back some blue painted porcelain from China and they kept importing it. But because of problems with Chinese trade and civil wars, the Dutch needed to figure out a way to make it for themselves, which they did very successfully. And it helped that they had a number of breweries making beer that were going out of business back in the 1650s, leaving some of the buildings in Delft vacant. And they were perfect for making pottery because they had kilns and plenty of storage space. The Royal Delft Company actually got started back in those days in 1653 and it's been in business continuously ever since. Back in those days, there were 32 different earthenware factories in Delft. Well, the industry began a decline back in the 1800s because of competition from other countries, from England and from other European countries that had some cheaper porcelain. But Royal Delft continued operations under various ownership, continually growing stronger and more famous. In 2003, they celebrated their 350th anniversary, and in 2012, they opened up the present showroom to the public. And that, my friends, completes our comprehensive look at the city of Delft.